You said that in Toronto as an undergrad, you did a senior thesis or a literature survey on artificial intelligence. This was 1964. Correct. What was the AI landscape, ideas, dreams at that time? I think that was one of the, well, you've heard of AI winters. This is whatever the opposite was, AI summer or something. <laughs> it was one of these things where people thought that, boy, we could do anything with computers, that all these hard problems, we could, computers will solve them. They will do machine translation. They will play games like chess at, they will do, uh, you know, prove theorems in geometry. There are all kinds of examples like that where people thought, boy, we could really do those sorts of things. Um, and, you know, I, I read the Kool-Aid in some sense. I still have <laughs> a wonderful collection of papers called Computers and Thought that was published in about that era. And people were very optimistic. And then, of course, it turned out that what people had thought was just a few years <laughs> down the pike uh, was more than a few years down the pike. And some parts of that are more or less now sort of under control. Uh, we finally do play games like Go and chess and so on better than, than people do. But there are others. And machine translation is a lot better than it used to be. But that's, you know, 50, close to 60 years of progress and a lot of evolution in hardware and a tremendous amount more data upon which you can build uh systems that actually can learn from some of that data. and the, and the uh the infrastructure to support developers working together like an uh, open source movement the internet period is, uh, is also an empowering but what what lesson do you draw from that the opposite of winter that optimism is well i guess the the lesson is that in the short run it's pretty easy to be too pessimistic or maybe too optimistic, and in the long run, you probably shouldn't be too pessimistic. I'm not saying that very well. It reminds me of this uh, remark from Arthur Clarke, a science fiction author, who says, you know, when some distinguished but elderly person says that something is Im is possible, he's probably right. Yeah. And if he says it's impossible, he's almost surely wrong. <laughs> but you don't know what the time scale is. The time scale is critical, right? So, what are your thoughts on this new? summer of AI now in the work with machine learning and neural networks. You've kind of mentioned that you started <clears> to try to explore and look into this world that seems fundamentally different from the world of heuristics and algorithms like search, that it's now purely sort of trying to take huge amounts of data and learn learn from that data, write programs from the data. Yeah. I, look, I think it's, it's very interesting. I am incredibly far from an expert. Most of what I know I've learned from my students and, <laughs> and they're probably disappointed in how little I've learned from them. But um, I think it has tremendous potential for certain kinds of things. I mean, games is one where it obviously has had an effect on some of the others as well. I think there's, um, and this is speaking from definitely not expertise, I think there are serious problems in certain kinds of machine learning, learning at least, because what they're learning from is the data that we give them. And if the data we give them has something wrong with it, then what they learn from it is probably wrong too. And the obvious thing is some kind of bias in the data, that the data has stuff in it like, I don't know, women aren't as good at men as men at something, okay? Right. That's just flat wrong. But if it's in the data because of historical treatment, then that machine learning stuff will propagate that. And that is a serious worry. And the the positive part of that is what machine learning does is reveal the bias in the data and puts a mirror to our own society. And in so doing helps us remove the bias, you know, helps us work on ourselves, <laughs> puts a mirror to ourselves. <laughs> Yeah, that's an optimistic point of view. And if it works that way, that would be absolutely great. And and what I don't know is whether it does work that way or whether the the you know the AI mechanisms or machine learning mechanisms reinforce and amplify things that have been wrong in the past. And I don't know. I, I but I think that's a serious thing that, that we have to be concerned about. Let me ask you an out there <clears throat> question. Okay. I know nobody knows, but what do you think it takes to build a, a system of human level intelligence? That's been the dream from the 60s. We talk about games, about language, about uh, about image recognition, but really the dream is to create human level 
our superhuman level of intelligence? What do you think it takes to do that? And are we close? I haven't a clue and I don't know, <laughs> roughly speaking. I mean, this was I was Turing. trying to trick you into uh, <laughs> yeah, <right>. hypothesizing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Turing talked about this in his yeah. paper on machine intelligence back in, geez, I don't know, early 50s or something like that. And he had the idea of the Turing test. And I don't know whether the Turing test is- Is a good is, test of intelligence. I, I don't know. It's an interesting test. At least it's in some vague sense objective, whether you can read anything into it. the conclusions is a different story.